Well, hello all. Today we're going to make some um, gooseberry jam. The first thing we're going to do is we got out, we picked our gooseberries. Those are the fresh ones, and I have a few frozen ones. Let's wash them all because you don't want any little insects caught up with it. So obviously we are looking for anything that looks like a foreign object. Give them a bit of a wash. Now let's pour this water off through a strainer. If they look a little bit unclean, just we'll just separate them if they have little bits of foreign matter attached to them because gooseberries can sometimes they get picked up off the ground they can be a little bit messy I've thrown away all the bad ones I'm colorblind I can't see which ones are ripe or not we haven't gone for ripe we've just gone for size because I asked perplexity.ai can you make gooseberry jam from unripe or green gooseberries and it said yes you just may have to boil it a bit longer it's the first time I'm making gooseberry jam I presume it's going to all work out great I would like to have had apple jam to add pectin to it but I haven't been to the shop to get apples there's it doesn't want any little as I say foreign objects but we want nothing but pure gooseberry jam no gooseberry and insect jam any gooseberries that are look bad I would discard but all of these look great you can see at the bottom are little foreign objects little pieces of dirt I think the ones that are froze have gone soft. There's a little beetle, for example, or a bug. Don't want him in or her. We're totally non discriminatory. Right, so there's our, our gooseberries. As I said, I'd love to have had some apples because that adds to the bulk. It also dilutes the flavor because it's quite bland. But we don't have apples, so let's put it on our convection stove. Now we're going to add a bit of boiling water, just enough to cover the gooseberries. Switch the stove on. Still, I find a way to get fruit soft is to freeze it, but this is fresh, so it's going to take a bit more boiling. But I do really like freezing fruit first. And that gets it nice and soft. The time is hot fast, so let's see how long it takes. Well, 15 minutes has elapsed, and the fruit, look how soft it is already. It's very squishy. So, if I'd known it would cook this fast, I would have um, put in less water. So now we've got to boil it. Not, it must not burn, but we must boil away as much of the water as possible before we're going to add about a third to a half of the volume of fruit of sugar. But let's let it boil away first, and then we will add the sugar. So I'm expecting about 10 more minutes of boiling. Well, 10 minutes has passed, and I've got to be careful 
to keep on stirring it otherwise it will want to catch on the bottom so now I'm going to take one third of the amount as the fruit one third to a half and I'm going to add it in watch how it changes and becomes almost translucent and uh, that's what I'm expecting to happen and now I'm expecting that it'll be able to it'll want to catch even more that's why I leave putting in the sugar till the very last moment if I wanted my jam not to have any of these actual the shape of the blueberries uh, of the gooseberries I would just squash it a bit like this with the spatula and that gets will pop all the berries and they won't have the same berry like texture in the jam this is just the final boil of, of the last amount of liquid that I the, the more I can boil off, the more liquid I boil off, the more chance it's got of forming a firmer jam. So sugar in, I would say, put that in about 5 to 10 minutes before the end. Now this is just the last boil. Well, it's boiled for about another... Seven or eight minutes. I'm going to. I would say that I kept on stirring it, but I would say that it's done. It looks syrupy. It tastes quite sweet, and it's got a tartness to it. Again, I would say that it would have been improved having the blandness of the apples with it, just to bulk it up and to reduce the tanginess of the gooseberries. Remember these were unripe mostly gooseberries so they're quite sour but the jam is quite delicious and you can see that it's thickening nicely. When I pull the spoon you can see it takes a while for the jam to flow back to the pan so it looks done. Let's just power it off. So you can see how thick the jam is now that it's beginning to set. It's still warm, but just look how slow it flows and how well it sticks. So here is our final gooseberry jam. Look how nice and thick that is. It's obviously got enough pectin 